Hello, my name is Dr. Grant McFetridge, and I'm the research director for the Institute for the Study of Peak States. This talk today is about hearing voices, or hearing schizophrenic voices. We're going to be discussing the underlying biology for this problem. Hearing voices starts with in utero trauma. While your mom is carrying a child, uh, the child can sometimes be injured with physical bumps and, and other damage. When this occurs, a trauma happens in the child. Now, this particular kind of trauma we call body associations. It's the same sort of thing that happens in Pavlov's dog, where the dog combines or, or associates the sound of a bell and uh, the taste of food and starts to salivate. In this particular kind of trauma, the baby is injured and it associates the emotional tone of the mother that surrounds him to survival. So imagine that you're a little baby, you reach out to your mother for help at that moment, and that trauma moment gets frozen in time. In the example shown on the screen, the mother was feeling sad at the moment of the injury. So now the feeling of that mother's sadness becomes coupled uh, to survival. The fetus feels that it needs to uh, have the mother surrounding it to survive. If we look inside the baby's cells, we see an interesting biological mechanism. The survival feeling is connected to a messenger RNA string inside the endoplasmic reticulum. That feeling of sadness is embedded in another ribosome that connects to that mRNA string. At this point, the system is stable, and in the future, that person, maybe right now, but in the future, that person couples survival with being surrounded by that particular tone of sadness that the mother had. That's just the first part of the biological underpinnings for the voices. Up to this point, you don't have voices, but you do have these associations. Now, later in life, the person feels lonely, and that triggers a very common fungus, one that virtually everyone has, and that fungus interacts with that ribosome that had the sad feeling in it. In this case, the sad feeling is an example. The fungus injects a crystalline material into the center of the ribosome. That crystalline material is the basis of the voice itself. In other words, without the crystal in there, there would be no voice. Later on in life, we see these traumas played out in our lives because we find ourselves sexually attracted to people who, for the most part, have those feelings that our mother had when we were traumatized in utero. In the example shown on the video, this would be a sad feeling. By the time we're adults, we have approximately between 10 and 20, a typical person has between 10 and 20 of these ribosomal voices. Now, it turns out that this problem is what's called a spectrum disorder. Virtually everyone has these schizophrenic voices. The difference is that a schizophrenic is not suppressing them. A normal person, or what we consider normal, has what they think of as thoughts or background thoughts. For example, a person who meditates might be meditating to try and quiet his, the voices in his thoughts, his quiet his thoughts, the monkey mind, that sort of thing. Turns out it's exactly the same mechanism, a common form of schizophrenia. The difference, again, between a schizophrenic and an ordinary person is the ordinary person can suppress. We can identify this particular mechanism because the ribosomal voices are in space around a person. In other words, whether they're in the body or outside of the body, they're in fixed locations and they have fixed emotional tones. Very much like going into a bar uh, where people are talking. Some people are in one location, some people are in another location, and they each have a different emotional tone. Each of those emotional tones is from how the mother felt during, one, during another in utero trauma. The voices are fixed in space because they're embedded in the endoplasmic reticulum in fixed places in the cell. We have two treatments for these, this particular problem. The first treatment is quite simple. It attacks, uh, or I should say, it dissolves the particular ribosomal body association of a voice. So it's done by a voice-by-voice -voice basis. Surprisingly, for many uh, voice hearers, this is, um, 
this works really well because they usually have just one, two, or three uh, very serious disturbing voices and the rest are more background. A more global treatment, we call it the silent mind technique, actually uses the principles of psychoneuroimmunology. It makes a person immune to this particular fungus. When that happens, all of the voices disappear along with the fungus. This approach, however, is more complex, takes longer. When dealing with clients or people who have schizophrenic voices, there's a possibility of other uh, causes. Now, the ribosomal voices we've been discussing are by far the most common problem, but there, there are, we've identified two others at this point. The first disease that we'll discuss is experienced quite differently. In this case, the voices move around in space, and the person who suffers from this usually describes the voices more like mind reading. The second condition that's a different disease process is where there's a short phrase, usually offensive, that the person feels in their body in different locations or hears in their body in different locations. And uh, it sort of moves around, but it's pretty much the same phrase or a slight variation on the phrase. If you're interested in learning more about this, our book, Silence the Voices, should be out in the fall or winter of uh, 2015. The underlying um, work we do with uh, trauma and prenatal trauma can be found in Paula Croteau's book, The Wholehearted Healing uh, Workbook, or our earlier uh, book, The Basic Wholehearted Healing Manual. The subcellular psychobiology portion is found in our new book, The Subcellular Psychobiology Diagnostic Handbook, which was published in 2014. Well, thank you for listening, and have a, a fantastic day.